Hey everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Abaddon 3, The Warborn. We are back in Magda's hut. Uh, I wanted to see if she has a new quest for us, because I haven't actually talked to her in a while. Um, so, do you have any more work? I do! I've heard rumors. I heard that you recently went to the Four Circles region. Um, yeah, I've been there. Then there is a small chance that you noticed that there are only three circles. Circles from the old times, tapping into the energy of the woods. The, wood. the fourth circle is lost. I will pay a generous bounty if you can find it. Um, that shouldn't be super hard to find, though. I mean, okay, I guess uh, there are monsters and stuff in the region, so you'd have to send some sort of armed force. Like us, for example. Um, fair enough, then. Uh, why do you want to find this circle? I mean, it's not really... It's really none of my business, but it doesn't hurt to ask. I care greatly about the old places, the sacred places. I am responsible for maintaining them. It is my duty. I only wish to know its location. Then I can tend to it. This is a spiritual matter. It has nothing to do with the war. Rudo nods. It is good to see a Chimerian honoring the old ways. I did not expect it. Magda shrugs. I do not do it for you. Nature does not care about our squabbles. How might I find it? I only have one clue. I know from old records that the four circles are arranged in a square. Finding the first three might help the fourth. It might ha might help find the fourth. That makes a lot of sense. And that was that's kind of what I was thinking anyway. If you think you know where it is, examine the underbrush there closely. You might be able to find an old path to the circle. If you saw any of the circles already, be sure to revisit them. You will need to get their precise positions to find the fourth. Ah, I see. Okay. So it will probably be attacked on some, if not all, of those locations. If I had to guess. Or, at the very least, um, I'll have to go there to hit some sort of hidden trigger. I've also been, well, experimenting, I guess, with um, a slightly different, well, I don't know, setup? It's an, I don't know if you can even call it that. I just have, I'm, I'm, I want to see if I can have my hand, my left hand, that is, uh, mostly on the... Um, uh, where would I start? I have no idea. Uh, on the uh, arrow keys, roll the map. It's certainly much more convenient than moving the mouse cursor to the uh, edge of the screen. I might even, if this turns out to work... Let's see here. Ah, uh, the circles. Oh, okay, I see. Oh, it must be up here somewhere. Of course, I've already found all the circles. Right. Um, if this, tends, if it, this uh, turns out to work okay, I might even completely disable scrolling by, um, you know, via mouse, because that more often than not creates more problems than uh, than it has benefits. You enter an old worn magic circle, it dates from before the rise of the Camarians, and they usually neglect these old sacred rings of stones. You take a note of its position, it might help you locate the missing circle Magda asked you to find. Okay. I mean, yeah, okay, the, the whole matter is, of course, complicated a little bit by them not being, you know, in the four corners, uh, you know, and thereby in the, well, not cardinal directions, but, you know, close enough. But it's uh, kind of slanted, I guess, the rectangle or the uh, square that they form, but it's, you can still kind of kind of see that it's uh, it must be here somewhere. Anyway, I'll just have to... I'll just quickly go to all the locations. Right. Uh, the problem with uh, having my fingers on the uh, on the arrow keys is that well, uh, there's the numpad, so, and uh, and I can use those uh, number keys to select dialogue choices and stuff and characters as well. Here, so that works. It's just that wait, why are my characters taking the long way around? I shouldn't it be possible to? Or did I... I'm confused. Wait, wait, wait. I did not tell them to go here, did I? Or maybe I did. Whoops. Maybe I'm dumb. I thought I had scrolled to this one. Yeah, but I didn't. Okay. Never mind then. That's fine. I had to visit all of them either way. So... I mean, the, the only problem really is that... Well, I guess I could rebind some other keys. The the thing is, you cannot rebind the S key, for example. I, it's 
even though it doesn't seem to do anything, it must be reserved by the engine. And you have no way to rebind the um, camera scroll screen scrolling keys that are uh, by default bound to the arrow keys anyway. So I would because I would love to bind uh, moving the camera to WASD, but unfortunately that is not an option as far as I can tell. Um, now that you found the first three, you might be able to locate the fourth. Okay, so that was just a simple trigger. Um, the biggest issue right now that I have is that I really like to hit the uh, tab key to, and, and you have to keep the uh, tab key pressed to display this kind of map overlay, which I find very convenient. Let's see here. Nothing seems to have happened. No path has opened quite yet, as far as I can tell. This looks different. Well, let's let's look here first, I guess. And uh, obviously, I'll have to move my hand across the entire keyboard to you know hit down, hit the uh, the tab key. But I could rebind that in theory. We'll see if uh, if I end up feeling comfortable. It's mostly about convenience in uh, picking dialogue choices and characters with the number key. So I would usually have my. Uh, for all the previous episodes of all the previous games in the series, I would have my um, well uh, ring, middle, and index finger on the one, two, three keys of the normal uh, keyboard. Well, so anyway, this does not seem to be where I have to be. So maybe it's a tunnel starting here somewhere. Ah, yes, okay. You search the underbrush at the end of this path. Based on the positions of the other circles, it seems like a good place to search. Your hunt is successful. You find some stones in the shrubbery, indicating a long-forgotten path leading to the west. Okay. <laughs> and here, <laughs> I had my fingers on the... Oh, Fading Sentinel. Uh, no, I did not have my fingers on the Fading Sentinel. I had my fingers on the arrow keys, and, uh, you know, um, I needed to hit one to uh, quickly exit that dialogue, and I... <laughs> I just instinctively reached over to the to the other one key instead of just hitting one on the numpad. Anyway, that's gonna take some getting used to, or maybe not. Maybe I'm just going to keep playing this game as I the same way I've played, you know, hundreds of hours of the previous two games. Um, you are the first living person to enter this grove in a, in many a year. Bleached bones and skulls poke out of the grass. Oh yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, long dead victims of the sentinel waiting here. There is a tall specter standing by a pile of skulls. It has been here for a very long time, and it has mostly faded away. Only the circlet on its head still seems solid. When you get close, it turns to you and begins to speak. The thing is too far gone for you to be able to hear it. Its word come out as a whisper. Um. Hmm. Well, I mean... Maybe if I if I can convince it that I'm here on behalf of it of its people, that might do something. Although most likely none of the dialogue choices really can really uh, can really uh, God, what's the word? That's the worst. Prevent a fight. Jesus. Uh, so a shaman named Magda sent me to restore them a magic circle. The shape tilts its head to one side, perplexed. Oh, you can't tell if it understood you, but something in your words got through to it. The specter shrinks back and fades away. You are alone in the grove. Alas, the ghost circlet disappears with... Oh. Oh, crap. Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> that is a bummer. Um, load save game, yes. Uh, quick save... Auto save. Uh, that would have been. Oh yeah, it's one to one thirty-three a.m. By the way, don't worry about it. Um, I have not found very good opportunities to record lately, so this is the best I can do. Um, well, do I want to reload this entire area just to fight this thing and get it circled? Did not expect that I would miss that. Hmm, because that's, I mean, a circle is probably something for for a mage, I would guess. 
I kind of want that. I mean, I don't see a reason not to destroy this shade if it's fading already anyway. It's not like I'm, you know, killing a living being out of greed or something. So, let me quickly... Well, let me pause recording and um, get back here real quick. Okie doke. And now that I've done the smart thing and actually quick saved before an encounter, as I should always do, I can choose the not super smart response and just ask, who are you? More whispering comes out. You can't even tell what language it is speaking. The sentries have leached most of its power away. Well, uh, whatever. Die, undead horror! The spectre doesn't turn away. It rises. It raises its hands and swoops towards you. It calls forth what little power remains to it, which turns out to be a surprising amount. Okay, let's hope this wasn't a terrible mistake. Um, hmm. Okay, well, another inconvenience is that, of course, uh, quick slots are bound to the F keys, so I'll have to move my my hand unless I want to do some serious large-scale rebinding, if that's even conveniently possible. So, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll just keep playing the way I've, I have been for so long. So this is the Fading Sentinel. It has not summoned anything yet, or called any reinforcements. Um, I do want to check out the Shrapnel Grenade, because I have not actually ever used this. Okay, 48. Critical damage, that's not very good. Uh, what does the Earthquake do? 50. Nothing else. Well, that's also not great. Well, I mean, not, not again, against a single target. So there was no real reason to uh, expect that. Okay. Set it on fire. Okay. Attack it. The Spectre points at you, a wisp of essence flakes away from its hand and enters your head. You feel confused. Awesome. Okay, Ayali's confused and vulnerable and weak. That's kind of alright. Okay, uh, Earthquake might be good against groups. Although, well, I mean, what does the damage say according to the tooltip? I guess it has a chance to deal up to 100 energy damage before resistances, so... It's not terrible. Call of the Winds is only single target, but it also drains my entire uh, vitality at once. So, of course, that is uh, kind of a factor. I'll just keep attacking. And, well, she can do one of these. I don't know if that. Oh, wow, 22. That is not great. <laughs> I did not necessarily want to cleave Ayali, and that's fine. So yeah, her... For single target, uh, her sing normal attack is just the best I have. And the thing is dead, and it did drop something. Uh, I A wishing crest. Extra intelligence. That's kind of what I expected. And uh, it's definitely better than just some extra evasion. Let's see, can you use this? Well, you can... Hmm. Are you going to benefit from evasion, from 5% evasion, more so than from straight-up armor? Maybe? I guess. Okay, so anything else? Mirror cannot be sold. Nope. Okay, cool. Worth it. For the circlet... You enter a grove and find a fourth old crumbling stone circle. There's nobody here, just the stones. It's somewhat anticlimactic, but you've done what Magda asked. You just need to return to the news to her. Really? Is that really all there is here? Hmm. I mean, there was an optional encounter along the way, which... Hmm. Is uh, interesting, if nothing else. I wonder if it's if there's any reason, other than role-playing reasons, to uh, not take the circlet, or I guess rather not um, murder. Well, not murder, uh, not destroy the spirit and take its circlet. 
is there a, an extra experience reward that might make it worthwhile or maybe we will we would have gotten a special reward from Magda for respecting their ancient spirits I don't know we might or might not find out okay. uh, nope not here we watch the little dots move across the map <laughs> hey Magda. Uh, I found the fourth circle. You tell Magda where the circle is and what you found there. She makes a note of it. She then removes a charm from her neck. She gives it to you with a pouch of coins. Okay, so um, I don't think we missed anything here. Thanks to you, the circle will be restored. The dark power there will be removed. I am grateful. Okay, do you have any more work for me? It doesn't matter. If the other villagers see me talking to you too much, it will put me in danger. I must stop dealing with you. Okay, well then, good day to you. And with that, yep. Okay, so I uh, noticed earlier, before I actually started r recording the episode, that uh, Aldun's quest line completely r disappeared from the journal. And indeed, when I talked to him, he told me that, I, that he didn't want to disturb me any further or distract me from, uh, you know, my, uh, um, from my, my, uh, dealings with Redbeard, or whatever. So, right now we only have the main quest and the Nicodemus quest line, which, which I guess is probably going to stay until the end of the game. Or, who knows, maybe we won't have access to Nicodemus at some point. Time will tell. However, oh, actually, we did get a charm of insight. Wow, more intelligence. And well then, I guess I'll. Didn't we have something similar? Wait a second. Oh, he has endurance. Hmm. I thought I had given her something, some extra intelligence or something uh, in place of, of extra crit chance already, or was that a scarab? I don't know, maybe not, I don't know. I'm confused. I could swear. But maybe I shouldn't. Extra dexterity. Oh, I think I gave her, oh yeah, I used to have the the extra crit chance, and I gave it to her. Okay, that that's what it was. Gotcha. So we have the extra crit chance now, which I guess does more for him than the extra endurance. So there we go. We can keep that for now. Right. So, here we have Kirikdor. So let's head there. I'm sure that our recent travels have not delayed our arrival enough for us to miss Delus again. Right? You're getting close to Kirikdor, an ancient meeting place of the Will Realm. You can tell this because the trees around you are starting to get all weird and wiggly. You're walking into a vague cloud of powerful shamanic magic. Shamanic? Shouldn't that be shamanistic? Hmm, I don't know. Your training th uh, taught you to immediately recognize the spells used to hide paths and turn forests into mazes of confusion. The rebels of Kirikdor know you are coming, and they are prepared. The question is, what will they do? Perhaps the shaman standing on the road to the east has an answer. That seems like a definite option. Oh, oh. Chapter 2, Re The Rebellion. Much of the Wilderm is in rebellion against the Pact. If there is to be a, if there is to be peace, the Civil War must end. I agree. Is that the shaman standing there, or... Hmm. This looks like it might be the corruption coming. Spreading across Linnaeus. Hmm. Who knows? Shaman Arilda. I'm not sure if that name should be familiar. It does not immediately ring a bell. The shaman waiting for you at the end of the path is an elderly woman. Though she is old, alone, and a rebel against the pact, she is utterly unafraid. She reminds you of Dom. Hopefully she won't try to kill you. She leans on her staff and gives you a respectful bow. 
You are Ayali, a hand of Avedon. I am Shaman Arelda. I give you greetings. Um, well, greetings to you. Shaman Arelda nods, appreciating the courtesy. I have come to briefly interrupt your journey. I know you are here because of the meeting. The meeting? We have had a meeting with Deles. The leaders of the Farlands, your foes, have sent messages, and Deles delivered them. Rudo is barely paying attention to the conversation. He is watching Arilda. I think I met her once, he whispers to you. She is not without honor. Listen to what she says. Nathalie emits several obscenities. What is it about Deles that he can always be one step ahead? Arilda continues. We have met with him. Now we are ready to meet with you. We have much to discuss. Um, well, so the last was here, yeah. I, I mean, these questions, or uh, this question in particular, seems kind of pointless. But there's always a chance that the game is going to give me some extra information, so I'm going to ask anyway. So the last was here. He was. He came, to, he came to convince us to fight the pact at his side. We told him our terms. He left. Now we must meet with you. Where has Delas gone? I don't know. He didn't tell us. He left here... He left here annoyed with us. There was not a lot of trust. Um... Well, okay, I'm, I'm ready to meet with you. You will not meet... You will not meet with me, but with our leader. I will soon allow you to pass our woods and walk to Kirikor. First, there is a small problem. What is the problem? Deles will deal with us, but he will not trust us. He left a force of soldiers in the woods around Kirikor. We told him that this is not allowed. He ignored us. Since we may need his help, we could not push, we could not push the issue. Why did Deles leave forces here? I think Deles suspects we want to negotiate with the pact. Perhaps make a peace. Deles is right. You are here, after all. I think those soldiers are here to kill you before you can reach our leader. <laughs> what if the enemy soldiers attack attack me? Uh, I mean, first of all, she just told us that that's probably exactly why they are here. And then, I mean, of course we will fight back and uh, defeat them if they attack us. I mean, that's a, the dumbest thing you could possibly ask. Completely pointless. What would you do if anyone attacks you? Defend yourself, of course. Um, well, I want to proceed to our meeting. Then I will ask only one thing. Kirik Tor is traditionally a place of peace for negotiation. I ask you to respect our traditions. Okay, I get it. Still, I mean, why would my character ask uh, that question to begin with without knowing that there is something special going on here? So, I ask you to respect our traditions. Do not fight when you are here, except in self-defense. Oh, well, I mean, okay, that's easy. Rudo says, this is the truth, Ayali. It is a tradition we should follow. I do not intend violence today, but I will defend myself if I need to. I would ask no less. The meeting may take place. I wish you luck in evading your enemies. We might need their help, so we can't aid you in fighting them. I can open the way. I'm ready. Then I will remove the spell I have placed. It will open a path that will direct you around the, the many warriors waiting to ambush you on the road ahead. She mutters a few words. You hear a rustling to your left. You turn and look just in time to see the trees shift slowly out of your way. The path is open. You turn back to Arilda, only to find that she is gone. Unsurprisingly... Okay, so this is where the main road would normally go, but uh, even though they cannot help us fight directly, they can help us evade the enemies. So I guess I should still try to do that. You pass through a neglected barricade and enter the woods west of Kirikor. The site has been used by the Wildrealm for centuries, and you can see the remnants of long-abandoned settlements and camps everywhere. Not all of these groves are empty. Uh, are empty, though. There is a large camp not far to the east. Warriors are drinking, shouting, and singing. You detect the traces of a Tawan accent. Shaman Arilda didn't lie. There are lots of armed Farlanders in these woods. A deadly obstacle between you and Kirik Tor. Oh, I would really li like to fight them under most normal circumstances. 
Huh. Even a named person who is not immediately hostile. Interestingly. Well, first thing first, I'm going to save. Then I'm going to start looking around. Let's see here. Okay, we are down here. We want to go there. I'm tempted to try and see what happens when I approach them. I mean, just approaching them <laughs> doesn't technically count as uh, starting a fight, right? And s why else would they be uh, would they not be immediately hostile, and why would there be a named person if there wasn't some sort of dialogue that that is supposed to take place first? So I'm probably ultimately going to take the stealth route, if you will, even though unless later on there are some actual patrols. That should not be super difficult. I just want to see what happens when I approach them. You enter this grove where a band of Taiwan warriors are happily drinking and singing. These Firelanders must be happy with whatever happened in Kirikor. They are also the enemy, far from home. Then one of them sees you. They jump unsteadily to their feet and draw their weapons. One Tinker Mage yells, You look... look packed! Like packed! Packed fighter! We have orders for you! Huh. <laughs> Don't you recognize me? I spy for Deles. Step away. That's a pretty bold lie and probably easily discovered. Uh, I'm here to visit Kirikor. I come in peace. The Tinker Mage nods, processing this. Deles said Pact is coming. Coming to Kirikor. Keep them away. Our job... Are you? His? Eyes? Uh, Olivia? That's definitely a female sprite and a female-sounding name. His eyes slowly focus on the Avedon insignia on your shoulder. That's not right. You... You... Attack! Uh, no, I don't attack? Well, okay, that's kind of what I expected, though. Unfortunate. But I don't want to fight them if I... I mean, there's probably some extra loot in there. Also, well... Okay, just a little bit of exp exploration that I have to redo. That's just fine. Where Ogre Throg and his Basilisk? Okay. So yeah, there's I mean there's definitely some experience to be gained and some extra loot to be grabbed from those people if I were to attack them. But there might also be an extra reward for actually remaining peaceful. Either an immediate uh, material reward or some sort of... Um, maybe I can use the, uh, the fact that I did not provoke a fight here to my advantage later on. Uh, yes, let's pick that. Grab the animal skin, the drake skin, and this... Not sure if that... Well, I guess the drake skin could technically be worth the expense of a um, of a lockpick. What's this? A ruined tower. Completely abandoned, it looks like, at least from the outside. Well, I have no no reason to, to enter this place, of course. I mean, you know, role-playing-wise. But uh, curiosity-wise, I have to. Grab some stuff. Not the mop, though. Well, actually, only that one thing. What's this? A statuette. Okay, well. Is there going to be some... Oh. When you enter the small storeroom, you feel dizzy. It seems like simple fatigue at first, but you aren't fooled. Someone nearby is using mental magic on you, leaving you confused. You f the feeling soon passes. You search the room, but you don't find anything unusual. You leave frustrated, and with a determination to find and punish whoever was tinkering with your mind. Huh. Okay. Dry bone. What is this, Super Mario? Is there... Oh, no, that's... Okay, I don't know. I didn't see the armor. I saw the towel on the ground. 
for a second there I thought that was a um, wait a second there's someone in this hidden compartment I'm not that is easily fooled um, yeah, for a second there I thought it was an animal hide or something hmm okay so I don't see any switches on the walls just making extra sure don't see anything I can interact with. Huh. Well, that's unfortunate. Can I find something here? Hmm. Strange. I wonder if that's something I can return to later or. If I'm missing something. Um, but I'm going to move on for now. Okay, this seems to be the main road again, right? Yeah. Okay, this is another entrance to the map. Is a way forward? Oh yeah, yeah it is. Wait, cave entrance. Oh okay, so I guess. Oh, actually, two cave entrances. Two entrances to the same cave. Let me just quickly take a look around here. I don't think there were any people right here. So far, I've only seen the Farlanders in those two camps. Oh, Farlands, Farlands Warwolf. Um, hmm. Does picking a fight with these uh, with these wolves? Count as uh, breaking the peace here? I don't know. It might. Yeah, that's the other side of that camp. Because I, because I can approach just a little bit, only to, you know, uncover the map here a bit further. Huh. Now I wonder if the map, uh, if the cave is actually uh, optional. That might not... At first I thought that uh, would be a passage through to Kerrigtor, but maybe it's not. Maybe I'm supposed to actually take the main route here. Oh, you are on the road, Shaman Arilla blocked off. From this angle, you can see why. In the distance to the southwest, yeah, you can see a large force of warriors. You duck out of sight and spy on them. They are Farlanders, a lot of them, and they are waiting to ambush anyone who walks down the road. If you continue in this direction, they are sure to see you. It will be a very dangerous encounter. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I'm not afraid of, of the encounter. Oh. Okay, I don't think they will actually come my way, but... Hello. It's just loot, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do want to stay peaceful for, you know, role-playing reasons and because there might be some form of reward for doing that. And there's already more than enough fighting in these games. Character guard. Ah, okay. Right, front gate. What's this way then? The other side of the, f the river. Rogue warriors, brigand archers. Okay, I suppose they have nothing to do with the Farland troops that the less brought here. So maybe they're okay to hunt down? Or maybe I should actually enter a character first. Maybe I'll get a quest to take care of those guys. You come to a quiet, disused grove. There is an old standing stone in the center, covered with worn carvings. Nobody comes out here much. Pity. It's nice and tranquil. Grudo looks around, lost in thought. He inspects the ground at the base of the stone. It isn't clear what he's looking for. Then he shrugs. Hm. It's nothing. He returns to your side. Really? Is it nothing? Well, 
pen and a shovel. I don't know if that's supposed to give me any any kind of hint. If so, it doesn't really work. Well, okay. I guess I'm going to ignore these brigands for now. Can I slip past here? Probably, huh? Maybe. Actually, you can't really tell. Wildrim warriors, huh? So these should be the. These should belong to Kirin Tor directly, huh? That says rebel camp down here. Rebel camp. Oh, those are rebels. Yeah, I mean, sure, brigands and rogues. Where are we on the map? Okay, so there's probably yeah. Okay, this is an exit here. Stone blocks. Well, thanks, but no thanks. Some hammers here. Yeah, but only the not sellable, not uh, non weapon kind. Wait, so this is the character front gate. There's a cave there that leads who knows where. So these guys outside the outside character. Hmm. I don't suppose they're going to turn hostile. In fact, this track is used for f uh, foot races. Okay, and it probably has been for centuries. Some young rebels of the Wild Realm are training here. It's a nice brief escape for them. You watch for a bit, but keep your distance. You aren't going to learn anything valuable from them. Okay, if you say so. I mean, there is no one with a name here. I could take that potion, but why would I? Oh, there are six warriors of the Wildrum here. Um, the Wildrum, yeah. Their garb marks them as from two different tribes. Four of them stand in a ring around the stone platform, watching the other two have a fist fight. They are really pounding each other. When you approach, one of them, one of the spectators, spectators turns to turns to look at you. Shh, she says. This is an important ceremony. Rudo says, "May I judge?" She smiles. More eyes see more. Rudo stands in the circle. Stands in the circle. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll just observe. You watch the fight. Even with bare hands, it's quite bloody and dramatic. The woman who spoke to you whispers, "We're settling a clan dispute. If you're waiting to settle your own duel, we won't be long." Seems clear enough. You stand back and watch the punching. Okay. Yeah, I mean, sure. Why would I care what they do here? It doesn't seem any of my... Uh, that doesn't, doesn't seem any concern of mine, really. Oh. <laughs> okay, some bug just randomly landed on my hand. I was wondering what was itching there. <laughs> Random details. <laughs> Hashtag random details. Oh, a wretch sentry. Crap. Even rebel lands are not free from wretch infestations. Oh, so th this is not a wretch that is uh, somehow allied with, with some human group or other. One of those cunning vicious creatures is standing on the path ahead watching you. Then it turns and runs. Awesome. Uh, is it going to get reinforcements or... Oh, not really. So there's a wretch cave. Cool, there's all kinds of places here. I wonder if Kirikor is, uh, or has the potential of becoming my base if I decide to side with the Farlanders. Which, I might. Still, I haven't quite decided. I guess, once I've actually talked to their leader, whoever that might be, It'll be easier to make a decision there. This reminds me a lot of the entrance to the to that outlaw uh, settlement that we found earlier on in the game. Rudo looks around at Kirikor. 
Many Wildrim folk are before you, some warriors, some hunters. Most of the people here are active rebels, but a few civilians are mixed in. He is worried. This is my nightmare. This war has been a misery, but at least I've never had to hunt my own kind. These are my people, Ayali. It's hard to bear the thought of having to kill them tomorrow. <sighs> it doesn't have to happen. I agree, yet Redbeard is still in power, and he is not known for his mercy. He blames us for his tragedy, for this tragedy, but... <sighs> he shakes his head. And who do you blame? He thinks on this, deeply feeling the need to be diplomatic. Some think these people were driven to rebellion when Redbeard rejected many reasonable requests and refused to compromise in any way. Hmm. <sighs> wow. Be between these options, it was their choice to rebel, not Redbeard's? Uh, <laughs> well, that's one way to look at it, but it's not very realistic. I don't care about blame, I have orders, I'll follow them. Um, well, at this point, I've pretty much decided not to follow orders unless I can... unless I find these coinciding with my own ideas, you know? Hmm. In the end, they had no choice. I mean, you, there's always some choice, but I guess in this situation, that's the only reasonable thing to say. <sighs> I don't know. We will never know. Maybe they had a choice and we don't see it. We'll never know now, I guess. Blame is a waste of time. We have orders. Let's carry them out. Well, okay, that's what you said. We'll see about that. Right. Oh, Warrior's Tower. Hmm. Should I check that out? Or maybe... Maybe I should actually go talk to their leader first and then hmm thing is maybe there is no no time for exploration after that although I really hope that it does not come to open hostilities here at this point I'd really rather fight against Redbeard than, than continue working for him You know, if, if I knew for sure that the game um, will offer me a way to kind of, oops, yoink, uh, to kind of work or, or pretend working for Redbeard, but actually follow my own agenda. Oh, hello, Arilla. We meet again. Um, well, if I knew for sure that the game is flexible enough and is going to eventually offer me options to, uh, you know, to settle things in a, in a manner that I find satisfying and um, morally acceptable, then I would, uh, I would do that, you know, I would, I would keep, keep going, keep being a hand of Evadon here, uh, while being as gentle as I can toward the Far Farlanders, until I finally, eventually, turn against Redbeard openly. Um, but it might be better to, you know, just be on the safe side and and decide to, uh, well, side with the uh, with the rebels. Maybe right now we'll see. Okay, first of all, we have some lore here about the Wildrum Rebellion. Let's take a quick look. Uh, again, as previously, if you're interested in reading this, feel free to pause the recording, uh, pause the video and uh, read it. And, uh, okay. Antel? Is that the le- oh. Might not be the leader. There is a long table in the corner of this hall. Oh, I guess it's this one. Yeah, this is also kind of where the uh, quest marker is. Um, there's a long table in the corner of this hall where the leaders, shamans, and other honored whoever's are allowed to eat. There is more food and better alcohol. A young warrior sits in an ornate chair at the end of the table. He stands and turns when you approach. He is a powerful man, a tall wall of solid muscle. He is covered with scars, and his armor hangs with trophies. When he speaks, all others grow silent. But he knows enough to show respect to Avedon. He gives you a small, polite bow. 
I am Defender Emory. I lead the Northern Rebellion of the Wildrum. I have been waiting for you, Ayali. He motions to several empty chairs. I thank you for coming. Please sit and speak with me. I have something very important to say to you. Okay. Uh, oh, there's Emory. Okay. Uh, sure, I'm, I'm going to sit with you uh, in a second. I'm just going to take a quick look around here to satisfy my OCD. If you don't mind. There's going to be another exit to the outside. Um, well, okay, not going to talk to Antel now. Let's actually do this. Save the game. Here we go. Okay, dude with a character portrait. He's important. You sit and join Defender Emery. Food and drink is immediately brought to you. He insists on a meal before negotiations begin. Ah, he's... I already like the guy. <laughs> Everything is delicious and poison-free. Um, how do I know that? I hope not just by, you know, blindly trusting. At last, Emery belches, pushes his plate away and leans back. It is time to talk. Ayali, we need to talk to the Pact. We sent a messenger. Uh, we sent a message. I don't think we sent it to you. Why are you here? Uh, you sent a message? In what form and to whom? Hmm. We learned you were here from the Chimerians. Oh yeah, that's true. I bring greetings from the Pact. Well, I... <laughs> not, not really. Not necessarily. I mean, if, if I... If I disclose that we were, that they were, um, well, betrayed, or they might feel that they were betrayed by the Camarians, but hopefully I'm, I should be able to clarify things. I mean, greetings from the Pact. That's either lying or, or pretending to, to speak for the Pact. Um, when I really only um, follow my own my own lead here, I don't know what's uh, what's going to be more in my interest to say. Well, we let's try the truth. We learned you were here from the Camerians. Emery nods. I thought so. Deles was there before he came here. We heard about the damage you did to our enemies. You have our thanks. Um, damage we did to your enemies? Uh, wait a second. I'm not entirely sure what he's referring to. It's probably something obvious. Um, anyway. You're here now. This is good. There is something we wish. Uh, okay. What do you wish? That is the, that is the negotiation. You do something we want, and we can do something you want. First, I need you to swear something. This is Kirikor. It is sacred to us. It is a place of peace. You must swear. You will not strike anyone unless they strike you first. Um, well, that's, I've, I've already done that on my way here, but sure. I so swear. Thank you, Ayali. That makes all of this much easier. Now we can talk about what we need. We have a gift for you. You can end our rebellion. As he speaks, he grows sadder and more subdued. It is unnerving to see to see in such a mighty warrior. You realize that he is willing to surrender to you, which would likely mean his death, but only if the terms are right. Uh, so, Deles has been here. Yes, we asked for help. He made us an offer. Now we will offer the same deal to you. Oh, and don't ask us where Deles is now. He doesn't trust us yet. He gave us no clues. Why have you brought me here? Because the corruption is expanding. Ah, okay. So, my hunch was right there with that chapter title picture, title card. Um, the corruption is a land of wild mad magic to the southwest. Oh yeah, we know that all too well. No humans live there. The place is poison to your kind. Mm -hmm. The only good thing about the corruption is that it borders that its borders were stable until now. What has been happening? It started slowly, then faster. The borders of the corruption begin to creep. A few feet one day, a hundred the next. It eats forests, villages. It's growing faster. It was stable for centuries, but then something changed. It is eating our home. 
We can't stop it. We need help. So you have met with the Less. We did. He offered to solve the problem if the Rebellion joins the Farlands. We don't want to fight alongside Chimerians, but we will if you would save our lives. We'd rather deal with you. Uh, we, we will if it would save our lives, of course. We'd rather deal with you. What do you want? You have the power of Avedon. Magic, knowledge, strength. I think you can enter the corruption. You can find why it is growing and stop it. The rebellion is already failing. I admit it. The corruption wants to take everything. Here is our offer. If you save us, we will meet with the pact. We will negotiate a surrender. The pact will have one less foe to fight. I know you want this. Avedon wants it too. So does Redbeard. Rudo says, Whatever happens, whatever happens, Emery, this is a noble sacrifice for the good of our land. Emery just looks down at the floor. Nathalie is amused. This is a lovely bit of windfall for, for us, Emery. Also, it's been a long time since I found a magical puzzle that would really challenge me. Huh. I will need to consult with my superiors, so that would be Redbeard. Um, well, technically, if I if I would consider myself a loyal subject of his, sure, I would absolutely have to do that because he did not actually give me any sort of of authority, of special authority, past. I mean, I guess he did tell me that if I don't hear from him, I'm a hand and I have my own judgments to make. But that's not really the kind of situation that that he had in mind at that time. And I can't aid the rebellion? I mean, this is mostly aiding the pact, right? I mean, uh, if the corruption is expanding, it's in everyone everyone's interest uh, to find out what's happening and try to stop it if at all possible. Because there is no telling if and when it will ever stop expanding. So that's kind of a no-brainer. And if by doing so, we will also end the rebellion here. Um, that's also for the good of, of the majority, I would say. So, sure, I will absolutely do what you ask. Then we can then we can start now. Ask me and I will tell you where to go. It is a hard problem. I think we know things that can help. One other thing. One of your Avedon scouts is lurking outside Kirik Tor, thinking he is clever. Leave and I think he will have a message for you. Okay, thanks. Um, I want to discuss this mission with you. Every rebel in the vicinity is listening to your dealings very carefully. I am glad. I hope you can help us. I have some knowledge. I think that I can direct you. Well, okay, when did the corruption begin to expand? We don't know. We think it happened for a while, and we didn't notice. Then we did notice, but we pretended we were wrong. Then we finally saw the truth, but much land had been lost. We think it started about three years ago. Well, that's... okay. It's been a long time. How far has it expanded? It varies. The border is long. The distance changes. At worst, it has sent feeders over 30 miles into our lands. Rodo lets out a silent gasp. That is a small loss, but the expansion is not slowing down. It is speeding up. We need to act. Have you done anything to try to stop it? We have done all we can think of. Rituals, burning lands, potions, every ritual our shamans know, others we made up. We have learned almost nothing. The corruption makes us feel small next to it. Well, rightfully so, I would say. Have you seen anything unusual along the border? At last we can help you. We have sent many scouts. Some die, most return knowing nothing. But here, at this point, he brings out a map and points at a location along the border. One scout saw shades there, misty spirits wandering the border. They fade in and out. One scout saw them. They approached. The scout fled. The shades stopped at the corruption's border. This is very odd. This is a good place to look first. I wish I could help more. And, of course, a new location has appeared on our map. Okay, um, another question. Um, I'd like to know more about Kirik Tor, actually. Once, it was a fortress. It is easy to defend. Tribes would fight bloody battles to own it. Owning this place meant owning all the land around. Then the Wild Realm came together, and those who wanted to fight went to Cameria. Now it is a peaceful meeting place. Rivals come for competitions. When there are grudges, they are settled here. This is an old and precious place, with its own special traditions. Competitions? 
Sport, races, boxing, contests of will between shamans. Some come and camp here for entertainment. During peace, something would happen every day. He looks away. It was a festival all year. It was beautiful. I will never see it again. Hmm. Settling grudges? Our tribes feud constantly. When the anger leads to blood, the shamans force the fighters here. They are made to settle their feuds, sometimes with duels, with blood, some, uh, whether, wherever, whatever it takes to bring back peace. What special traditions are followed here? Peace. There is no fighting here. This practice is old and sacred. Life in the wilderness is hard and dangerous. Of our northern lands, only here can you be truly safe. Hmm, if you say so. I want to talk about the rebellion. Defender Emery is immediately on his guard. We are on opposite sides, Hand. I'll talk politics if I have to. I won't say anything that will hurt my soldiers. Okay. What are your dealings with Deles again? I hate Deles. We hate the pack, but we hate the Farlands more. The only reason we listen to that killer is that the corruption is too horrible. We can't fight it. We can only watch it eat us. How's your army doing? Uh. <laughs> we are tired. We've been beaten down. It is not a secret. The Pact and, his c and the Chimerians have killed many of us. We are not cowards or weaklings. Uh, we are not cowards or weaklings, though. We would never have thought of giving up. Not until the corruption started to spread. Why did you rebel? We all have our own reasons to join. I will talk for myself. The Pact built free roads all through the Wildrealm. They said any who would... Any who want to travel on them can. They said any who want to travel on them can. This sounds like a small thing. You didn't face the brigands that came, the settlers who invaded our sacred lands, the merchants selling our young selling our young things they should not have. Huh. So the usual stuff. Hmm. Well yeah, obviously he cared enough about this to go to war. Uh do you regret the rebellion? Defender Emery looks away for a long moment and, and thinks. Then he says, No, I have buried friends, family, been wounded many times. In the end, you will kill me. Still, no. Never forget, Hand. If you do, my grandchildren will be fighting a war with yours. Well, whether you believe me or not, I don't want that to happen either, and I'm more than eager to end the fighting sooner rather than later. Um, I'm not entirely sure why he why he's convinced that he's going to die and especially at first I thought for bargaining with uh, with the pact he would be killed by his own people but now he says in the end you will kill me? Hmm. Maybe not necessarily with our own hands but I don't know. What are you trying to gain now? Well, hmm. As much as we can. We will send negotiations to you in the end. Uh, we will send negotiations to you in the end, I think. Not to Avedon, but Hanra's council. We'll grab as many, th as many rights as we can. They will give us something, I think, to keep us from going to war again. I know your side wants our lands back. I ask you, what should the terms be? Hmm. I think the pact should forgive you. Ah, that's really tough to say, man. I'm sure both sides have have done atrocious things, as in every single, every kind of war, no matter for what reason it's being fought. No one, or well, I mean, there are people who are truly um, innocent. I'm sure, but both sides have people who aren't. So simply, and and simply forgiving the rebels just like that, it's not going to happen. That's not how how politics work. I guess there will be peace when the worst of the traitors have paid. Of course, who determines who the worst of the traitors are and how they pay uh, can uh, vary quite wildly, but we'll see. It is a beautiful dream. Leaders like me and Arilda die. Then forgiveness, peace. One happy Wildrealm again. 
It is a beautiful dream. I don't think it will happen. Our descendants will pay for many generations. Possibly, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to to have high ideals and to strive for for idealistic goals and try to achieve as much of it as you possibly can. We'll see. I guess that's all for now, or do you have anything else to talk about? No? Okay. Interesting. Quest advanced. Okay, so not a new quest by itself. You learned that the corruption is expanding. They want to know why. They told you to go to a location of the border with the growing wastes. Right. Strange shades. So kind of a similar... Uh, similar theme as in the, the second game, unsurprisingly. Um, we're at over an hour, but I... Hmm. I guess I'm going to end it here, and we're going to keep exploring this fortress some more. Gonna talk to more NPCs, probably pick up some quests, maybe, for uh, taking care of those brigands, maybe? Or maybe not? And those wretches, maybe, or maybe not? I don't know how that works with um, this place being, you know, a place of peace and sacred and, and all that. So, well, anyway, we're going to learn all that and more, and more probably, next time. Uh, so, as always, I thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and I shall see you real soon. Bye-bye.